All right, we're live. We're live. Uh, you caught us playing in the background here while we were talking to Tom, but we've got Barry Jenkins from Virginia Beach, Carrie Shaw from D.C. and kind of Florida getting in there. So that's cool. And of course, Tom Ferry, the best coach in the industry. So Tom, you have a lot of awards. The thing that stands out the most is that you've always been super kind and approachable, dude. I, I respect yeah, that man. and I love that. So thank I, you for I, being I, on. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. So we were joking for everybody out there watching that it's a uh, Carrie Berry and Ferry. So it's, uh, you know, it's like we got a little thing going on here. We, sh we should do this. We, we could be like a law firm. This is great. <laughs> totally. That doesn't drink coffee. We drink mud water. We drink mud only. Yes. And there you go. There you go. All right, dude. Well, let's get this party started. First question we're going to ask you is this, and then we'll go off of that. But yeah, every time we talk to you, you have this amazing energy. And, yeah. and every time we've gone to see you, whether it's on stage or in person, small groups, yeah. you just bring it every time. How do you maintain that energy? That's what I want to know. Carrie, coffee. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. Uh, I learned a long time ago that energy is a choice. And I think every everyone watching right now, you can appreciate this. Carrie, you're you're about to go on a listening presentation. Your four-month-old kept you up the entire night before. It's a $2 million appointment. It's with someone you were just referred to. You don't know them well. You know you're going to be competing. No one cares that you're tired, right or wrong. Absolutely right. So what do you do? You just go, game time. Let's go. Right. And, yep. and Tristan, like that for me and Barry, right. Same, same thing. Like, like you're trying to recruit somebody on your team. Someone on your team is in a meltdown. Like no one cares that, you know, my flight was delayed, that I was in a crappy hotel. Like no one cares. So I just say, Hey, you know, what? my job every day is to be a level 10 and level 10 is just me versus me. It's not me versus anybody else. It's just, as your t-shirt says, life is really short. Energy is a choice. I can generate it. We all know the power of like, move your body in a powerful way, say the right thing. All that stuff that we all learned from Tony Robbins like 5,000 years ago, guess what? It all works. You know, that plus hydrate supplements and try and get some rest, but that's it. I mean, Tristan, it's, I know, I know people that are 30 and tired and it just, oh, it freaks dude. me out. Like what the, like, what the hell are you talking? What, what are you tired from? Oh, it's such a long day. And I'm like, you don't even know what a long day is. Dude, it's stop talking about Barry already. Come on. <laughs> well, no, seriously, what's what's hilarious about this is I have several children, but our four-month-old did keep me up all night last night. And right. I did only get three hours of sleep. So I'm like over here in the corner being like <laughs> Barry, right. right there with you, man. I know. So so just for context, I have a 22-year-old and a 20-year-old, and they also keep you up at, uh, at late hours of the night, but it's a different experience. Yeah, I can't imagine. It's all the I same. I can't imagine. Yeah. It's all, hey, it's, it's coming, brother. You better imagine it because it's coming. So Tristan, ready? Supplements, yeah. you know, hydrate, work out six days a week, stretch, yoga, meditate, Wim Hof breathing, right? I try everything. Like I, I just, I, I'm not at the Tim Ferriss level of like, biohacking everything but i am that person that if someone says to me oh you hurt your back you should try exome therapy i'm like oh what's that and then i do a little research on it and i find someone i know that does it and sure yes shoot 10 billion you know cc's of exomes into my back i'm like i literally will try anything because to me like the scariest thing on the planet is having no energy the scariest thing is not having a functioning mind a scary thing for me is like no longer being curious like that for me feels like death Dude, that you, love, you, you love what you do though too, right? I mean, that probably plays a part. Right. What, I mean, and, and Barry, you listen, Carrie, you know it as an owner, Barry, like family business, right? You've seen the dynamic, Tristan, you and I've talked about it before. Like I'm in the middle of, you know, three or four ship burritos right now. Like it's not always fun, right? It's it, it, for the most part, it's usually pretty challenging. And by the way, you know, the last 460 days, that's been really easy. But again, I go back and say, Hey, if I'm going to be in front of this camera, nobody cares about the stuff that's going on in my world. My job is to bring people value, be my best self and, and think about the end user. Like who's watching right now, everybody out here that's hanging out with us. Like I think about you and I ask myself, how can I be my best for you? And that usually isn't being like, <laughs> you know what I mean, that's very true, man. Well, which goes into my next question then. And then Carrie and Barry, 
feel free to <laughs> carry barrier ferry. Love that. To yes. Any time. Um, here, here's my next question because this whole webinar, this whole event is brought to you yeah. by Virtue Desk, the, yeah. the virtual assistant company. But how do you make sure that you continue to innovate? Because I text you some amazing companies. I'm like, dude, check this out. Yeah. And then you're Thank like, you. oh, dude, I've talked to them. I've talked to them. Yes. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm late. But how do you make sure that you continually innovate and check out what's the next best thing and you fully understand that opportunity? Yeah. So I think for everybody out there, um, you know, Barry, you were kind of say, hey, you, you know, obviously what you do, you're passionate about. My side hustle is I'm an investor in now almost 80 different companies, um, six of which have sold like so far this year. Acorns just announced they're going into a SPAC. Like part of my fascination, you know, for this, yeah, of course, I want to invest in companies and I want to invest in people and ideas. But you know what it does, Tristan? It keeps me on the pulse. Right. I learn about what's coming up next. And, you know, I, I join, uh, you know, Abundance 360, Dr. Peter Diamandis's mastermind. And you sit in this room and and I feel like a peon in this room. And then I just walk around like with the curiosity of like, Carrie, who are you? What do you do? Oh, I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm transitioning. I'm trying to solve, you know, dementia. <sighs> How are you doing that? Right. And I, can we have coffee? Like you want to meet for a drink? I just, I just stay fascinated. That's the obvious part. But then Tristan, I spent a lot of time uh, doing good for others. So the law of reciprocity comes back. So whether it's, you know, Spencer Raskoff, when he, you know, when he exited Zillow, texting him and saying, I'm thinking about your partner and what are you going to do next? And I hope whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then when he called me and said, Hey, I'm starting dot seven, uh, dot LA. The concept is we're going to do geek wire. What did, what that did for the Pacific Northwest and the tech space, we're going to do the same thing for the LA tech scene. And I was like, you're raising money, right? Cause I'm in. Cause that's another way for me to get a ton of access to all these interesting companies. So I have probably two dozen people that are like him that I just reach out to and say, Barry, what's new, what's next. And Tristan, you're one of them. Because you get the same phone calls that I get. Hey, you know a lot of people in the real estate space. We think we have a software problem. We have a, we have a CRM that's going to be better than anything else, Tristan. How many times <laughs> have you heard that one? And I literally just like, yeah, tell me more, right? Like just, right? Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. But okay, give me the pitch. Which We've got AI. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure you do. All right. Um, so I look at that stuff. I think it's just the natural curiosity. I'm fascinated by it. I have this little sign in my home office, which says, don't be your dad. And I'm not, I'm not like, oh, razzing my own father. I'm thinking about when my boys walk up to me at 16 and say, you should check out Twitch. And I'm like, what? Don't be your dad. But tell me about Twitch. What's it all about? What can we do with it? Oh, we can listen to EDM you know, concerts live on our phone. Oh, awesome. This is great, right? Just staying interested and not letting my, like, my mindset get old and closed off. Dude, I love that. Barry, Gary, do you have any questions? Because I've got one if you don't. No. Well, I mean, for me, uh, I think the listeners, those that are listening, okay, you're listening yeah. to someone who's successful, sharing ideas and concepts. But um, I think I'm learning a lot about mindfulness right now in my own life. And yeah. maybe it's because maybe I'm um, imposing that on what you're saying. But to me, what I'm hearing is like, be very much in the presence. Is that, would that be a good oversimplification? Like be present? It is. Uh, it's something that, that Barry, I, I have a very active mind. So, so, you know, trying to do regular breathing. I like, I wasn't kidding about Wim Hof, right? Like doing Wim Hof breathing exercises and, and doing meditation, whether it's calm or, you know, any one of these, you know, great meditation apps. And, you know, I'll go back to like Wayne Dyer meditation CDs. It's hard to stay in the present moment. It's hard not to have that reflection of, oh my God, I completely screwed that up. And I, I feel horrible. I, I don't know if anybody else out there has ever had that moment where you just, you just know you screwed it up. And then even though it was like two days ago or 20 years ago, it just, the thought creeps up and your energy changes, trying to block that stuff out and also not be too far forward also, right? I yeah. find when I go too far forward, I, I end up with like 50 different directions versus, hey, right now I need to be in the moment with my wife. You know, we've yeah. been married for 28 years. I've married her three times and I've never been divorced. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I made her move from Newport Beach to Dallas, right? Changed her entire life. <laughs> Probably a good idea to not be on my cell phone right now and just sit with her and have a tea. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? So I got to like, gut, I got to gut check my, and I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody out there is perfect. So Barry, what do you do? Like, give me a, give me a hack. I'm ready. Yeah. So uh, actually I have a lot of problems with being mindful. And so my yeah. journey with mindfulness has started with uh, the Evo planner. Um, you know, I took a personality test. They yeah. designed the planner on your, and um, uh, it forced me to think about my month my week and my day, which yeah. doesn't sound really fascinating. I know for those that are like mm -hmm. very advanced with mindfulness, mm -hmm. but it is kind of revolutionized yeah. uh, my, my business, to be yeah. honest with you. It really has. Yeah. I love it. Have you done any, um, have you done any like simplification of your house, like less clutter, uh, you know, like having less Dude, you're clothes, having mail. less options, like all that, I just saw Carrie's face, like <gasps> less clothes, right? But no, you know, like, I was just, thinking just we choices. both have a four month old. So yeah. we're really yeah. interested in less clutter right now. No, but I mean, I obsessively the last year, like, I think my wife thought that something was wrong with me. Like I organized our pantry. I, right. I like, I just, I just went into this like obsessive, like we're, we're stripping down we're, because I had to maintain too many things. And, you know, when I look back over the last year, uh, historically, you know, I'm not getting the things done that I really want out of life. And it's because yeah. I'm distracted. So, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like that conversation, um, even like when I'm talking to a CEO of a startup or I'm talking to a friend who's, you know, I was just literally just talking about a friend who was in a horrific lawsuit for like 12 years of his life, won and then lost the whole thing Dude. because of a technicality and now has to start the entire thing over again. And, and, you can just see the emotional wear and tear on he and his wife and their relationship and all that stuff, right? And, and even then, like the ability to just compartmentalize that and keep your life simple, whether it's, you know, whether it's like throwing half your clothes away because they don't fit you, you, you know, you don't wear them anymore, organizing your pantry, you know, making sure there's enough, you know, uh, diapers, which I had to go through that whole thing too. You know, just all that little stuff that maybe brings all of us a little more calm and peace because we don't need the extra anxiety of open yeah. loops and incompletes and stuff that didn't get done and oh my god and i gotta get on amazon mm -hmm. and you know i just trying to get all that shit out of the way well that's the yeah. important thing dude nobody talks about this stuff and they just want to go right into how do i make more money let's build yeah. a team but this is the stuff that allows you to grow yeah. at the right pace i agree well and, and, and like do, the next do, session is on yeah. technology right and leverage and so like, I'm, I'm going to be like, here I am, Mr. Nerd and digital and all this stuff. But like, I've yeah. got a pen and a piece of paper. Like I went back to the basics because I had to, I had to center myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Carrie, what about you? Have you read anything, listened to anything, anybody inspire you in that, in that, I mean, especially with a four month old, like I just have being raised by a single mom, you have no idea how much appreciation I have for, you know, you, my wife, my, my friends that, you know, decided to have a child on their own as a single woman, like it's, it's, it's very impressive. Thank you. Well, it's interesting that you brought up Tony Robbins earlier because yeah. I used to think something was wrong with me until I had the opportunity to spend a year traveling with Tony. And one of the things yeah. that I took away from that about mindfulness is that he said, I cannot meditate. And I went, oh my God, I'm not broken. Yeah. And so I actually found guided meditation. And for me, I had four natural births and I learned how to get so deep into a guided meditation that I could literally fall asleep in childbirth. Wow. So it's guided works for me because it keeps my yeah. mind focused on something bigger than where I am in life. And yeah. that's been huge. Do you know, uh, you know, Kelly Howell is, I don't, you should check out Kelly. I, I, I I'm going to go so old school on you guys. I had audio cassettes. Then I had CDs. Now they're just all on my phone. <laughs> Kelly Howell has 50 guided meditations on anything you can. I'm the same way. Like if you talk to me, I can go into that trance. But if all of I have is like, whoop, 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 or like, you know, like gong or water, if it's water, <laughs> I'm like, I should be at the beach right now. What's going on outside? Is that a squirrel? Like I did the same thing. That's funny, man. Do you, do you foresee changing your coaching strategy, guided coaching now all right, for this? So, okay, interesting. So the answer is yes, but I'll tell you why. Um, we, so, you know, Tristan, when I, I, I called you like four years ago and said, hey man, I'm going to change the game of coaching. Not, not like the mechanics of it and that, you know, the very, the coach client relationship, like, oh yes, I want Carrie as a coach because she's a rock star, of course, right? But forever, since I was a coach, like in 1992, it was a telephone, 
here was the evolution of tech. Then bury a headset. Ooh. Then we had, <laughs> then we had fax me your numbers. You with me? Then we got to like, oh, teleconference lines that cost you $4 a minute. That was really exciting. Then we finally got Microsoft and G Suite and email. But, but there was like no evolution in terms of the platform and experience. So four years ago, when I said I'm going to do video first coaching, right? And, and I remember watching like my 160 coaches, like men and women, like oh, get terrified of just the thought. Like women were like, I have to put makeup on? Like I do all my coaching like in my jammies, right? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you got to dress it up. But here's the thing. We just did a study of the last 500,000 hours of recorded coaching sessions. And, and when, you, when you're able to synthesize sort of like emotional sentiment for people in New York City in May as a real estate broker versus somebody in Tampa, Florida, the emotional difference is very real. The common interest though was about 65% of all of the coaching conversations were that of a guide. And I look at it like, Tristan, you've heard me tell the story of like row, like, you know, you, you know, if you're in a river raft, it's good to have a guide. 65% of the conversations were let, that guide saying, Carrie, go left. Yes, you're right. You should fire that person. Yes, Barry, you need okay. to stop having three CRMs and just go to one. It wasn't <laughs> like, you know, it wasn't the directive stuff that most people think of. And then the balance was the mechanics, the numbers, the, the problem you're dealing with and the challenge. But it was fascinating. So when you said guide, like, yes, mm, very me, much so. Dude. Think about the last 460 days, right? We yeah. had clients that said, literally, I was in Orlando doing a seminar a couple of days ago, my first in-person event that wasn't like my personal clients, like sneaking into Dallas, wearing masks and, you know, freaking out. <laughs> this was like 500 people in Orlando. And a woman walked up to me. She goes, I've been in your coaching room. I joined in May of last year. And I said, why'd you join? She said, because I felt like I lost my voice. And she wasn't saying she had, you know, like some throat issue. She was like, I just, I didn't know what to say. She needed a guy. She, she didn't need accountability. You with right. me? She just needs someone to say, Carrie, you might want to try saying this versus that. So I don't know. My, my little rant on that. Dude. I'm, curious, I'm curious though for, for Carrie and for Barry thinking about that. The conversation I'm in with a lot of mega teams right now, Jason Mitchell, if you guys know that name, probably do 5,600 transactions this year. He and I were chatting about his, his workforce of 264 agents now in 18 locations. And, and the challenge is like Robert Slack, right? The challenge is not Robert Slack, by the way, just good to see Robert. The challenge is like, what's the language today that's different as we move from a pre to a during to now a post for many of us, post COVID environment. And again, it's gonna be different in New York City than it is from Miami, right? And it's gonna be different in California than it is from one state over Arizona. But there is a different voice that I think is required right now, especially with all the costs going up, the possibility of inflation, interest rates still being low, there's absolutely no inventory all that stuff. So I'm just curious, like, Carrie, what are you saying to your agents to have them resonate with their consumers? That's a really good question. Um, the other day we talked about some of the insecurity over what's changing in the market. And I actually had them do an exercise because I felt that they were telling me one thing, but what I was sensing from their demeanor was different. Right? So what they were telling me was we're confident that it's the right decision for our clients to buy now versus wait. So that's what they're saying. Yeah. But what I was interpreting from some of the objections they were telling me they were getting is that's not what they were, the confidence that they were um, articulating to the client wasn't actually resonating and it's because it was a lack of confidence within them. So the, yeah. the exercise I gave them, which I would encourage all of you to do, I said, go find proof sources. Look at how many homes have been built in your market and look at what was the case in 2008 versus now, because it's not the right. same. And the more you have proof sources, the more you're going to be able to speak to the person with the insecurities that they have yeah. and not just have it be from your perspective and your words, but also be able to provide detailed backup and proof from the way that, that you want them to have confidence. Because I believe right. sitting on the sidelines right now is a mistake. And I believe that with all of my being. Yeah. So because I believe that, I embed a lot of confidence in my agents and therefore give them the ability to do that. But it's about really knowing your market and really knowing how to talk right. about it. Yeah. And not coming across and Barry, I want to same, same thing from you. I, I made a statement to 178 mega teams like you guys um, last week in Dallas. And I said, the fundamental challenge I'm hearing from a sell side or a buy side is this 
everyone's got the same thing. Why me? Why now? Look, I did it again. Why me? You know, why is she with me? Why is she with me? Why now? Here's all the reasons now, 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 now. And then look, I did it again. And I'm like, I think we need a fundamental shift in our marketing message. I just, you know what I mean? Like if, if everybody's basically doing the same thing, we know it's wrong. <laughs> so true. So true, man. Yeah. Barry, Barry, what, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, uh, I lost my shirt in 2008, like many did. Um, yeah. But I lost it mostly because I was waiting for things to go back to normal. I waited yeah. probably 18 months and just kind of sat around. And, um, and so this time, uh, I remember uh, March of 2020. So right when this thing started to hit, I, was, I did the rally cry. I said, look, I hope things go back to normal tomorrow. I said, but can we just for the foreseeable future, uh, we're going to act like they aren't. And so now we've got to figure out what are we going to do? And, you know, at, a, at the highest level, um, we made more accommodations. And, um, and I think that, you know, um, not taking away from the suffering of people last year, because yeah. there was a lot of that. Yeah. But for my household, uh, 2020 was the great pause. Um, I found myself, I found my wife, I found my children, like they were always there, but I found them. Yeah. And so authenticity, being authentically, you know, connected to the client, um, has helped us a lot. So for example, yeah. uh, the homeowner checks their home value on our website. We don't call them and ask them if they're interested in selling. We find out if they are, but we never start there. Yeah. We start with, you know, um, assuming they actually don't want to talk about selling their home. And, uh, and so I guess that's a big idea. Uh, we've uh, learned how to be a little bit more in touch with the needs of the person right. in front of us. I would love, and if you, uh, I'm assuming you've tracked and measured that and you did sort of a before and out, you know, before and after analysis, one approach versus another Kyle whistle, who probably all of you guys know, yep. uh, spoke last week in my event. And we're talking about, you know, helping your sales team perform better. And he said, you know, the challenge that most of us do, and you know, and he's been guilty of it. He says, he goes, he, he stood 20 feet away. And he said, imagine I'm trying to putt from over here, 20 feet away to make it in the hole. And you give that's, that's basically, here's a Facebook lead to someone, you know, a brand new agent, right? Try and make this 20 foot putt. And I'm going to give you like 300 of them. And yeah, you might make one, but you're going to miss 299 times and it's going to kill you emotionally. And then he said, instead, what if you brought him in here? And you just got him to make a couple little putts super easy. And his, his thing was saying like, it's, it's less about trying to, you know, beat the brains out of this, this potential prospect client over here is probably just in the research phase. And they were watching a cat video before they clicked on your curious about the behavior, you know, you know what I mean? Like context, right? Right, right. So whether it's a nurturing campaign or a different approach, his whole thing was like, let's try and bring them as close as possible. So I love that. I would love like, what's the question that you ask to open? I'm sure that's what so, everybody wants to know. Like what, yeah. what's the question you ask? So we send them, uh, as soon as they register, they get a home bot report, which I'm sure you know all about yeah, that. And course. it's like, yeah. I get one on my house. Like it's yeah. really interesting yes. data. So we just call mm -hmm. and text and we just want to know, did you get it or did it land in your spam? Yeah. And yeah. I changed the AI for Wilopo to actually say the same thing. I said, yeah. When, yeah. so the text message is, um, did it, we just want to check engagement tripled. Yeah. AI team has never seen anything like it because yeah. it's just like the person's like, oh, you know what? It is in my spam. Great. And then we just do another administratively oriented question. Right. And that, that next one is um, asking them if they want another piece of data that we have. Yeah. And if they say yes to that, and we just keep going. And the culmination of the appointment is to say, I know you're not interested in selling right now. Yeah. We actually do that. Right. However, um, if you're open to selling in the next year, we want to stop by and look at your house like a buyer and shorten yeah. your honey-do list. And we've had a lot of leads that registered and said like, I'm six to 12 months away yep. and we shorten their list. We're like, oh my gosh, if you just put it on the market dirty, like it'll, you'll make a lot of money. So if you're thinking about this yeah. and they do, and they actually, yeah. like we've listed probably 15 just like that in the last three months, Right, it works. So Carrie, I'm curious for you. Um, I know with a bunch of my like personal clients, um, how, how much has the listing presentation changed in the last, you know, call it 15, 16 months? You know, where we used to go and be like, here's my marketing, here's what I do, and this is the, because you knew you were competing. How much has it changed for you guys just in the last, even the last six months? Well, essentially, 
everything that we were doing at the beginning of COVID changed, yeah. right? We were, we went from a very hands-on approach and we're not so stealthy. We're pretty direct. Uh, yeah. We have a huge ISA team and we are, we are the epitome of, uh, we go hard in the first few days when we get a lead and it works for us. You know, we'll yeah. close probably 1500 transactions this year. Yeah. So I would say, I would be very curious to test. Like I love, I was like taking notes on what you were saying. Yeah, I, Barry, I respect you a lot. And I feel like it would be very interesting for us to try that approach. Shorten the honeydew list. Got mm-hmm. it. Um, I love it. We are, we are like, let us come and help make your life easier. And because we have such a big presence in our area, it was, that's always been our in. And all of a sudden we weren't comfortable making that ask for a while. Our area was very yeah. COVID sensitive, extremely. Right. So it was, um, we changed it to a Zoom appointment, obviously. We listed a lot of homes by doing Zoom walkthroughs. We had such a large database that we were able to sell a lot of properties without ever putting them on the market. So it was about meeting the client where they were and actually having the emotional capacity to feel for them. Like if they're terrified and then you have an agent who's trying to convince them to have an open house, like that is just not the right approach. So it's just continued to evolve. Um, we're back to trying to really push for in-person meetings before Zoom because we just find them to be more effective. But yeah. I would say as a, as a leader, I had to really pay attention to the conversion because the agents would shift back to what they were comfortable with yeah. and they weren't comfortable closing on Zoom. So what they would do, we would talk about it. They would be closing their, their retention uh, or their conversion to a signed agreement was like neck and neck with their in-person and then they'd get comfortable and they'd just be having a chat with the person and that's where it would end. So I would say the main thing as a leader, what we had to adjust is like continually paying close attention to how our agents were in conversation and reminding them that they could close on Zoom. So we actually started auditing all of our Zoom appointments Perfect. Because we wanted to understand what's going wrong when our conversion yeah. started. And every single time it was, they stopped closing. They started closing for the next appointment instead of closing for the business. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think if there's a, uh, there's a SaaS software and we've tested it. Um, and it'll, it'll come to me, Carrie, but literally in that context of a Zoom meeting, you could basically tell the software, the, the machine learning to say, listen for this trigger, listen for this trigger, listen for this trigger. And all it was doing for us was, Gosh, why is it that, you know, Carrie, you know, helps 75% of the people that she meets with and Barry's only at 32. They both were in the same training. They both have the same skills. They're both selling the same exact product and, and gong.io. That's the name of the software gong.io. And all it does is you say, this is the formula for our presentation. And then it lets you know, Barry, where do they, you know, where's the variation? Where's it happen? Where's the breakage? And do they ever come back to it? And the, once you see that, then instead of saying, Hey, you need to do a better job closing. You're actually like, no, actually where you lost them was you go into the process here. You did all your pre-qualification. You were doing your needs analysis and then you diverted away from it. You got lost in a relatable subject matter that took you off in a deep space nine. So maybe just check it out. That's important data too, because when we're looking at when certain transactions close and we go back to where we originally got them, we're like, oh, Facebook leads take 18 months to close. Yeah. Oh, we stopped talking to them after a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, uh, hey, Tom, someone in the audience, Tina's asking, what was the name of the app again? It was Gong, but how do you spell it? G-O-N-G dot I-O. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it's not an app. It's a, it's an industrial strength piece of software. It's, you know, like I was at uh, Saster four years ago, five years ago. And it was the, it was the bell of the ball. Everybody was talking about whether it was Microsoft, whoever it was, anybody that had uh, a sales team that were making presentations, pitches, zoom, whatever it was, everybody was using it to try and figure out what's that secret sauce of going from 27% conversion to 33% conversion. So makes sense. Really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I question for you. Tristan, I, Tristan, I totally took over your interview. Sorry. I just want to oh, know dude, I love Carrie, this, what was man. going on. I'm taking notes, bro. <laughs> Look, I'm taking notes. I'm like, this is good stuff. All right. Question for you, because you brought up how we all have a challenge getting to where we want to get to mentally, right? Even with, with what you're trying to do with the guided coaching, which I agree. Awesome. Yeah. 
I think that has a lot more to do also with us as agents. So Carrie, Barry, myself, mm -hmm. choosing certain tech or companies mm -hmm. and then having the wrong mindset in our approach and then saying, oh, that didn't work. Oh, that sucked. Yeah. Oh, how is it that we can choose the right tech and put it into place so that it works by being able to focus on the right part of it? Because that's a big challenge, man. I hear a lot of people saying online leads suck. And then you see somebody like Barry and Carrie who are crushing it with it. Yeah. You know, the, the challenge that we make so much with tech, and it's funny because I, I can't name uh, CEOs, but you know, if you follow me or you know me, you know, I coach a bunch of very large CEOs, like north of 10,000 agents. I'll just say that. And, and they'll come to me and say, hey, we heard about this one. What do you think? We heard about that one. What do you think? And my response is first, you got to demo everything, right? Because like when people say to me, how do you pick the right CRM or how do you pick the right, you know, uh, e you know, email service provider? My response is, how did you pick your last car? Right. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's a thousand SKUs of cars and there's at least 50 different CRMs and there's tens of ESPs and there's tens more platforms for everything we want. Right, Barry? So Oh, yeah. I say you start with, we, we created an internal document in my company. We call it the banana memo. And, you know, if you, you know, I'm always like, that's bananas. And bananas <laughs> for me is like, you know, this is a, a serious, like, <laughs> like, Carrie, you're the best. You are bananas, right? Like it's a, it's definitely like a love language thing for me. So, so we wanted to create this iconic process because with 350 people inside the company, that's a lot of opinions. It's a lot of people coming in, you know, coaches and clients and saying, you need to check this out. And Hey, Tom, just got a pitch by this new company. What we didn't want to do is just have any one very loud voice come in and say, we're switching to this. So we created this thing, this iconic process called the bananas memo, where we're like, okay, what is the pain point or problem we are trying to solve? Right? That's the first question. Okay. Why are we trying to solve it? How will you know that it's solved when it's solved? What are the people and the resources like people and money required if you're only allotted three OKRs in your division or in your team, does this support one of the three or are you adding a fourth OKR or are you dropping one? And then at the end of the day, we do the racy, which is like, who's responsible, who's accountable, right? If you guys are familiar with some of these decision-making processes and what's happened is <laughs> a people will, instead of going, this is a great idea. Now we're like, we'll do a banana memo on it. They're like, oh, maybe it's not that great of an idea. <laughs> Right. Like if they're willing to do the work to show, you know, to say, Tristan, this is why we should do it. Then I think you're going to get, you're going to every individual agent watching you, you need to have a better process other than I, I talked to Larry in my office and Larry said, it's good. Does that make sense? That makes yeah, total we, sense, bro. I, I want like the that. recording. Cause I need to write that down. I love it. I'll, I'll I was just going to say, yeah. Carrie, just e email or text me and I'll just send, I'll send it to you. We'd like, we have like six iconic tools that, and by the way, these tools are not easy also, because I'm you're going from how we've always done it. Hey, we're a consensus-based, data-driven meritocracy. And then I realized consensus doesn't always happen when you have a 15-person management team. And so, so we needed to get beyond that. So now the banana memo is the beginning, right? Then it goes to racy. And you've got like these six different tools because like all of you watching right now, there's 8 million ideas. Dude. How do you know which ones are actually right and then will you actually put the time and the people and the resources required to get the maximum results? And in what time period mm. do, mm. do less, but the shit you do make it count. That's yeah. how you build a great business. Well, dude, that's the biggest challenge for, for real estate agents and for right. solopreneurs. We're trying sure. to do everything on our own. By the way, I just texted Barry. I said, dude, you need that banana thing for sure. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a banana. This, need a banana this was actually really cool when we were in the middle of like doing virtual events for tens of thousands of people and you send them these, right? So you're like, hey, was that a good idea? And they're like, that's bananas. <laughs> so good, dude. Uh, so fun. question for you in regards to the, to this growth, yeah. because agents yeah. sometimes never grow past one. And that's that's okay if that's what they it's want. Okay. It's okay. Uh, they actually, but, Tristan, they actually do because they've got a broker, right? Someone like Tracy that's there guiding. They've got a sales manager. They've got an in-house transaction coordinator. They got their escrow officer, their Lorgan officer, their closing certain like nobody is alone in real estate. But right? sometimes they make it feel for themselves that they are, right? Sure. They're like, oh, you know what? I can't do this. And they forget that they have a TC yeah. or a broker or right. something. You run a large organization, man. It's a it's a business. And yeah. I think we can all learn from it. I want to know what that organization chart looks like. Like you have so many ideas. You move really yeah. quickly. Yeah. Right? 
who do you who do you punt your ideas to to be like hey dude work on this hey dude work on this for marketing hey social do this hey let's do this because i'm assuming you have a ton of people what does your top layer look like right. Tristan, who's like over here behind the camera is like raising his hand like yes <laughs> um so if you would have asked me you know a while back i would say i just walked in and said hey i got an idea let's go it's good to be the owner I'm conditioning myself around the banana memo, right? Like, hey, if it's a really good idea. No, it doesn't mean like, hey, are we gonna do a summit or not? No, we're already contracted, we're going, the event's gonna happen, right? But if there was something, if I, if I suddenly said, hey, I wanna do something outside of the budget, then you've gotta do a bananas memo. Does that make sense? Got it. So um, for me, I've got obviously a CFO, a COO, right? VP of marketing, VP of ops, um, you know, president of the coaching division, she runs essentially that whole business on her own, right? My, my job as a leader is to help remove the constraints of growth, right? It's not always to be the, the genius with a thousand minions. I don't want to be that person, right? That was, and, and by the way, that actually works out okay for some companies because Steve Jobs was a genius with, you know, tens of thousands of minions around him. Mm -hmm. And look at what's happened to Apple since he's passed away. You with me? You, you could almost say Elon Musk, right, is the same way. Contrast that to the genius of all things Amazon. It was about having all of those extraordinary people in place doing the right yeah. thing with a common mission. That's the, that's the kind of business I want. Yeah. So I want to be innovative and I want to be creative. And Barry, I want to pick your brain and find out what Carrie's doing and what's new with Tristan. But then I take it back to the team and say, okay, I've heard these new things. Where does this add up? Should we write a banana memo on any one of them? Or is it just, let's just make sure we all stay informed. Does that make sense? Dude. Yeah. That's like sexy, it, it's, bro. It's doing, that. it's doing, and, and everyone listening, it's, it's highest and best use. The highest and best use of my time is to coach, create, connect, and contribute. That's it. Right. If right. I'm doing, if, if I'm not doing one of those, Carrie, like I'm not in my lane. You with me? Like if I'm like, Okay, let me let, let me see if I can engineer some stuff. Not even gonna happen, right? Like I can figure out my <laughs> iPhone, right? So do you know what I mean? Like, but teach me the new app and I want to learn that and all that stuff. But like the truth is, even like booking a flight is not the best use of my time. That's why I have an assistant. That's very you true. With me? And I think when you figure that out, it, it doesn't mean I work less, it just means the stuff I work on really matters. So what is that stuff that you're working on that that's like your one thing that you're passionate about? What is that? People. It, so again, coaching, whether it is coaching up a manager in my company, you know, a CEO calls and says, hey, Ferry, got a minute, right? Like Carrie, got a minute as a manager, right? Got a minute. And you're like, no, but I have a bottle of whiskey and an hour and some <laughs> tissue, right? Like, sure, let's do a therapy session. Um, so I do a lot of those kind of pro bono because it's just, it's good for my relationships in the industry. Then I have my personal clients, then I have my management team, you know, then I have my 20 year old son who just like on a whim said, I'm not going to play tennis this year for college. I'm going to become a wholesale mortgage broker. And I'm like, what is that? He goes, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Now I actually knew, but I was like, what does that mean? He's like, I don't know, but they're going to pay me money. And I was like, they're going to pay you money. Awesome. Have, have fun. Let's go at it. But you know, he'll text me every day and say, how do I deal with this? What do I, you know? So it's, I think I'm always in that kind of coach mode, but then I have to have time for research, study, reading, listening, watching, observing, interviewing. So it's about organizing my schedule to be able to do all of these things. And, you know, again, the advantages of travel, travel gives you downtime that for me is uptime. You with me? Open up my laptop, dig in, do the research, do some Facebook posts, you know, text some people that I've been wanting to pick their brains up. So you, I mean, Barry, you said it earlier, like it's all schedule, right? Like I'm, I'm old school. If it's in my schedule, it exists and it happens. If it's not right. in my schedule, I, I don't even know what day it is. Like it just forget it. Right. Sure, dude. right. What do you use as your schedule, Tom? Just regular digital Microsoft uh, Outlook. Like uh, that's it. I mean, you know, like I'm sure it's connected to 8 million other things, but like, that's all I need. I, I don't need it to be complicated. Yeah. I just need to make sure that the stuff that is in my schedule is in my lane. So what's the lesson for everybody else out here? Whether it is a virtual assistant, whether it's a transaction coordinator, whether it's going to your manager, whether it's partnering with your loan officer, you have people, whether it's your, your 15 year old who would like do anything for a bag of weed, like you have to just be more resourceful, right? If you're more resourceful, then you'll ask for help. If you're more resourceful or maybe less egotistical, and I don't mean that to be confrontational, but if you're less egotistical and you get out of this, I can do it better. Nobody can do it better than me. I mean, I was in Orlando a couple of days ago. I could carry, I can take the seats 
and I can organize the seats in the 500 room theater. I can organize those because I've done it before for 31 years, but it's not the highest and best use of my time. Yep. You with me? The best use of my time is like meeting and greeting and talking to clients and hanging out and making sure that my deck is ready and like delivering. And, yeah. and sort of metaphorically, I see a lot of agents that are like licking and sticking. They're trying to, you know, learn the software versus saying, I'm going to outsource this to a VA and say, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you access to my iPhone, to my iCloud account. I'm going to film things on my iPhone every day. I'm going to give you four templates. Your job is to take every video that I put, I produce and convert it with my template, with my opening, with my la 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 la, la and then just put them back inside Dropbox for me or in my iCloud account, and then I will post them. And then if I'm really smart, I say to them, here is access to conversion.ai. I want you to go ahead and look at the title of the video, create the title of the video based on what conversion.ai or TubeBuddy says, have them do it all for $500 a month. Does that make sense, everybody? And you could do this, you could say same thing with my transaction. The only thing you can't really delegate is relationships. I can't name the company, but Tristan, listen to this. One of my, uh, one of my clients, and again, I, I can't name the company but because he, he would go nuts, but one of my clients said, we have, let's just call it 5,000 agents. And if you know anything about real estate right now, 40% of the agents haven't sold a house this year. Like that's, that's the MLS numbers across the country. 40% of the agents have not done a deal. In the single greatest real estate economy on the planet, 40%. And, and if you look at the numbers, Carrie, look at your numbers in, in the MLS across the board, right? Huge MLS in your area. It's like 90% of the transactions are done by the top 50% of the agents. And if, you're in the, if you're, and if you're in the top 50%, it means you did like four deals, right? I mean, the, the race to, to work with the greats has never been greater than it is now. So, so here's what they did. They said, what if we just took the 40% that haven't done a transaction and said, here is like 25 tasks that agents need. We will certify you in it. You will essentially for a fee, it's a gig economy play. Need you to show a house, $25. Need you to put up signs, $25. And literally agents that were currently just using resources in the business, but not selling any houses are now making money. And the productive agents are now outsourcing for a few shekels, those little things that ate up all their time so they can be with clients more. That's, that's the next evolution. Of, and that's why like virtual assistants and having an assistant, but for some people, that's a hard pill to swallow, right? Tristan, like, Hey, you're brand new, go get an assistant. Hey, you're, you're at 20 deals a year, but in the state that you live in your taxes and your expenses and your lifestyle, you know, like you're still kind of living paycheck to paycheck and you're wildly successful. You with me? So bringing on an assistant is scary, but saying, Hey, for 50 bucks or hundred bucks or 200 bucks, having another agent do it for you. They're like, yeah, I can do that. Right. Same reason I, I have DoorDash deliver the food. Makes sense. So yeah, I think I think that's the next well, evolution. I think agents have to, and just business people in general have to tweak their mindset a little bit and say, you know what, if I can get a virtual assistant part time to do the social media that I'm not doing already. Right. Right. That's a big win. Yeah. Yes. But Kristen, they'll never be as good as you ever. Yeah. Okay, Barry. Barry, there is no writer. Anybody watching this right now, live or in the future, that's a better writer than conversion.ai. None of you are a better writer and none of you are better at yeah. SEO juice than TubeBuddy. Yeah. None of you, right? So it's right. like, th those are my other virtual assistants. Well, and I was being sarcastic. Uh, I know, you know, I know, man, I know. Everybody, you know, they, they I call it task-based management, you know, just- yeah. Hey, can you do these two things? Check in with me at the end of the day. Let me know how it went. Like, if you just do that, you can, you can work with people that are not as good as you. I mean, right. you know, you know, and you can scale really quickly. Yep. Yeah. Carrie, yeah. what are you thinking about over there? I'm laughing because, uh, when I was thinking about how to add value today, I have the same philosophy. Like what do people need to hear? That's going to be impactful. There are so many people that get stuck with whether they're trying to outsource the buy side or the list side, mm -hmm. they need me. They yeah. ask for me. And that's an ego. That is, that is not, it's just not a fact because you have yeah. people sitting in front of you that have succeeded. And it's not that my clients don't love me. They do. I have deep relationships with them that have lasted a long time, 
But when you evolve to the next level of thinking, they trust my ability to have a duplicatable process and have a team that's well-trained. And they also trust my ability to identify talent that cares deeply about their interests. Yeah. And that's what's missing in delegation. People mm -hmm. often it's, I, I hear what you're saying about the $25 thing. And I think that that's the first level of acceptance of delegating, yeah. but yeah. truly you want people who are extremely well-paid, who are highly, highly successful right. to be able to fill in for some of the skills that are higher level skills. Yep. So I feel like agents live in this place of scarcity where they're trying to pay someone $10 and then they want them to do this amazing strategic yeah. job and take care of their clients. Like, no, I'd rather have you make $100,000 or $500,000 or a million dollars if you're adding that much value yep. to the business. And so stop thinking small, start really looking outside yourself and saying, if other people can do it, so right. can I. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes. It's almost like it's the funny, like having to go to the doctor's office. It's the old metaphor, right? You, I sit down with an agent. I'm like, when you go to a doctor's office, like, did you, did the doctor check you in? Did, did the doctor say here, please fill out this paperwork. Did the doctor put you on the scale? Did the doctor do it? Did the doctor do anything other than make you wait for 15 or 20 minutes before he or she walked in and said, all right, here's your prescription. And then did the doctor fill the prescription? Did they bill you? No, they did their highest and best. Right. And, and the reality is you, the three of us, four of us, we know agents can make way more money than any typical doctor out there. Maybe the, maybe some of the extreme plastic surgeons, maybe they can compete with, you know, with some of us, but for the most yeah. part, not a chance. Dude, that's, that's, good. that's right on. You mentioned conversion.ai, which by the way is awesome. I've been testing it out. It is really, really I love that yeah. one. Yeah. I am uh, not, Hey, I'm not an investor. But if you can get me in the deal, any any one of oh, you. Oh, dude, yes. for sure. I'll, get me in the I'll deal, text yeah. you right after. Okay, I was good. about yeah. to mention that one to you. Okay, All right, please. Yeah, I'm Gong, not in, but I want in. Gong AI. Uh, yep. You mentioned that one. Gong.ai. Tube, Tube, Tube Buddy. Perfect. Yep, Tube Buddy. I mean, for all of us that are doing video, Tube Buddy is like the secret weapon. You literally go in and like, tell me the things that are being searched in my area, right, on Google where there is no video answering that question. Wow. Oh, I did not know that. I haven't existed. heard of that one. People are like, I don't know what content. Uh, I don't know. How about the thing that's being searched 1500 times a month in your marketplace and there's no video for it? Dude. How about, yes. how about the thing that gets searched over and over again and there's 50 videos for it, right? And what that tells you is it's like, you know, hey, there's, there's 85 skews of bread on the bread aisle. There's a reason why, because it's like some people want the orange one and some people want the crunchy one and some people want the white bread and some people want the rye bread and right. So there's a market for it. So you should have a video on that as well. Dude, and then one I want to drop in there is yeah. Morning Fame. Check out Morning Fame. What it does is it breaks down your YouTube videos and it mm. says, hey, these are fire. These are not. Stop doing this crap over here. And it also says, hey, Tristan, you on that? Yeah. based on, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my other, my, I'm looking at Tristan, one of my main producers and managers like, hey man, you on that? Uh, Morning <laughs> Fame is amazing, dude. It also okay. says, hey, based on your current video, uh -huh. let me give you some other suggestions on titles yeah. and analytics. Yeah. Here's everything you need. I'm like, dude, this oh, is- Oh, what's that again? Cool. Morning? Morning Fame, I just put it up at the bottom there. Thank you. And then also- I was still taking notes from the last thing. Guys, this is awesome. And then the last uh, one, obviously, Virtue Desk. It's my Virtue Desk is bringing yes. this whole sponsored by this whole yes. thing. Yes, big shout out to Pavel and the team, right? Absolutely, yes. I'm telling you guys, just the idea around uh, a virtual assistant that manages, you take photos, you do, you do your videos, you create your snippets, you're just on your phone, and then you just upload them to your iCloud account, you give your virtual assistant access to it, you give them five to six frames of how you want your videos produced, they come back, and you're like, oh my God, look, I have all this beautiful content. Now I can just keep posting it. And then whether it's conversion.ai or your own text doesn't make a difference. It does, but you know, just one step at a time, get more content out there, do it virtually, right? Do it through a VA. Dude. Yes. All right. Uh, Adam says, Hey, you're throwing at all these names. Can you just put it all in one email for me? Yes, definitely. We'll do that. So <laughs> I, um, I thought it's, I was getting Adam's a good delegator. I don't even want to take notes. Could you just write all this stuff? Out <laughs> for me, Tristan? 
send, so if you're doing that for Adam, will you send it to me also? Yeah, me too. I'm like, oh, please, I'm like we'll over here. Guys. We'll send it out to everybody. Um, then, I just used conversion uh, dot AI uh, this morning. Yeah. It has a review response. So you copy yes. the review and then it it writes a response. Because, you know, I always say the same thing. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so Thank much. You. And it just gets, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're really good. It's yeah. odd. You know, the uh, so Jason Pantana, who many of you have met, who's like leads all of our marketing events. So he's coaching Gary Gold in Beverly Hills. And Gary lists like some $360 million new house. And Gary's like, I'm really struggling to like write the language to this property. And Jason's like, hold on, just opens up his laptop, says, tell me about it. 14 bedrooms, four master, you know, four master bedrooms, park view, lake over the da, 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 all like everything feature oriented about the house. And on conversion.ai, they have listing description as one of the boxes. He just fills in the feature, hits go, and then he reads it to Gary. And Gary's like, uh, could you send me that? And he's like, sure, copy, paste, send. It's, it's bonkers. It's going to save you guys a ton of time. Tristan, if you can get me in the deal, get me in the deal. I just texted uh, John Kirker, so. Thank we're, you. We're oh, no, then, I know John, John Kirker and Robert Stover, the guys that called me like five weeks ago in Miami. And Robert was my first NLP coach, John Kirker. Call him Across the Street Productions. He l- grew up across the street from my wife. Oh, yes, I've, known, I've known Kirker forever. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Right. I'll also text Carrie and Barry, Carrie, Barry, and Fairy. I'll text all of you together. Yes. KBF, <laughs> Perry, Barry, and Fairy. That's the best. Tom, anything else you want to add? You got a minute. Uh, no, I would just say to everybody else out there, look, if you're, if, you know, I'm assuming because you're watching this, that you are part of that 60%. Um, understand this, the flight to quality is very real right now. The flight to quality is very real. And at the same time, I'm going to make a prediction. I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. My prediction is the next two to three years, 50% of every transaction in the US will have a 35 to 50% referral fee associated to it. So the question for all of you is, how are you going to defend your position? How are you going to defend your position? And what are you going to do to really put your brand on steroids? Because the flight to quality is where people are going. And if you're not branding yourself properly, if you're not using Google and other tools to really defend your position on a hyper-local level, that's the only place you can beat these people. And I'm not busting the chops of Home Light and Quick and Rocket and Zillow and everybody else. Like They're just doing their thing, but you can beat them on a local level, even if you're aligned with them, as many of my clients are. If you don't do it, you're going to be working twice as hard for half the pay. That's the bottom line. So Think about how you're going to do that. And Tristan, I can share with you later. Like, here's the eight things that we're recommending to clients and you can share it with your peeps. Dude, definitely, bro. I'll email awesome. blast that out. And Tom, cool. thanks again for your time, bro. Yeah. Thank you, Tristan, man. It, Tristan, in the background, you rock, buddy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Carrie, Barry, appreciate it. Uh, you know, keep up the great work. Let me know if I can help. Tristan's got my cell phone, et cetera. The Robert Slack is up next. I see the king. Good to see you, my friend. <laughs> I'll look to see you soon. Thanks so much hey. for being you, buddy. Take Thanks, care, guys. You. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, dude. That's it's kind of good. We're we're bringing it all together. All of us are bringing up some value, and I think we've got Barry Jenkins next. So, Robert and Carrie, feel free to stay on. You guys are all perfect. Is that the Barry Jenkins? It's uh, the one and only. Really? Yeah. There, there's actually another Barry Jenkins. He's a director. He steals all my Google juice. Like if you Google really? the name Barry Jenkins, yeah. And we look nothing alike. So it's, yeah, I can't even. Dude, I just watched one of the movies he produced on yeah. Amazon. I was really surprised. Pretty good. Pretty good. It was really good. Did yeah, you think of I'm, me? I'm waiting for your new book to come out, Barry. That's what I'm waiting for. Yes. New book is with the publisher. I was told early on in my career that I was too nice for sales. The title of the book is Too Nice for Sales. And it's stories from my life um, and what it taught me about how I created all this stuff. And, you know, the the approach is why Y Lopo hired me because the top of funnel leads we crushed. And uh, so I'm not a, you know, I think I got C's in English. So I'm not like an expert writer, but I'm just sharing my story. So. But you leveraged it out, dude, right? No, I wrote it. You wrote it out, but you're not editing it. You're not publishing it. Oh, you're no, no, that. no. Yeah, yeah. I, I hired people to edit and make sure my yours were right and my twos, two, 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 you know, all that stuff. 
I would relate more to it if you just left it the way you wrote it, Barry. <laughs> that would have been best. <laughs> like the way you picked my name, Stars from My Life. Mine comes out in five volumes later this year, you know. So. <laughs> five volumes. <laughs> That's a great legacy, Robert. Volume uh. five. <laughs> oh, so good. All right, Barry. Well, look, let's get right into it. You you run a, an amazing team out of Virginia Beach. It's like mm -hmm. a team slash brokerage under better homes and gardens and yep. it's a you and your family can you tell me about the organization behind it and then do what you're going to do yeah uh the organization um i'm the cmo so chief marketing officer my um stepmom is the principal broker my dad is the managing broker um we have um you know instead of going after a lot of agents, um, nothing wrong with that business model. We decided that we would keep it um, small enough to where we could actually provide them with opportunities and then leverage their day out so that they're just shaking hands and kissing babies. The result is like 60 high performing agents. Um, the average, uh, the, the lowest performing normally does between 12 to 20 transactions a year, but we do with those agents, 800 to 900 transactions a year. Um, and so, you know, it's been a really interesting journey. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's all about just finding the right people that actually believe it or not, not everybody wants to take advantage of an opportunity. They say they do. But then when, you know, Netflix and uh, Taco Bell are more important than nobody's ever made, you know, it's never, that's never occurred, but I'm using that as an example. When, when comfort is more important than growth, uh, you know, you don't take advantage of opportunities. So we've really had a lot of fun and yeah. So that's kind of how we do things. You know, I, this next session, man, I've got a deck, but honestly, I can just talk through it with you guys. Like I don't need to pull it up or, or whatever. So, um, no, pull up, your pull up, Pull up the deck and uh, we can go from there, dude. <laughs> Good clarification there, Tristan. No, I didn't want it to slip on accident because, you know, sometimes it happens. All right, Barry, the deck, do it. <laughs> while, while you're shifting to this amazing deck, Barry, let's, <laughs> let's remind everybody that this is brought to you by Virtue Desk, the virtual assistant company, part-time, full-time. Take a look at them. We'll put up the link there. Uh, Tristan, dude, can you see my can you see my thing? I can I can see it, dude. Here, it's really <laughs> good. Right. Barry right. Lee, I love the signature. Look at that. I know me too. I was just like, damn, that's nice. Dude, that um, that reminds me of Joel Austin. I, I'm digging this. So that uh photo logo did that. Um, I think it was like 80 bucks. Um, I sprung for like they have three levels, but the company's called Photo Logo and they specialize in uh logos that are your name and they actually have professional writers write it out so um thank you facebook algorithm for telling me about it and i bought it and i love it oh well, i'm putting up the link to everybody right here photo logo do you still have your before you start do you still have your uh tracker on for facebook and instagram or you did say you tracker what do you mean you know how uh, it, it, with the new ios as soon as you turn on Facebook and Instagram, it says, nope. hey, don't allow Facebook or Instagram to track. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I let them on because all the, the coolest stuff I buy is Facebook is shopping for me. So I really don't mind it. Yeah, perfect. Me too. I have it on. Yeah. As well. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'd yeah. save a lot of money if I turn that off, but I haven't either. <laughs> all the baby cool stuff. Like, Doesn't your baby need this? So it, it won't have any issues. You know, it's like constantly bombarding you with safety things. I'm like, oh, I need the D choker. Dude, 131 Barry. babies were saved. I've got to get it. I go to my wife. I'm like, honey, should we? I, the D choker was recently. I I said, do we need this? She's like, the chances of us having it, you know. She's like, it's okay. She comes from a very humble background, so she keeps me grounded. Like, oh, that's know, good. I accidentally got the adult one first, and now I have a D choker for me <laughs> and the kids. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, back to you, buddy. Back to no, you. No, no, no. It's all good. Honestly, this best. is probably way more interesting. Um, all of us just being authentic and sharing. And well, dude, laughing. I'm sure. I'm sure Carrie and I will chime in anytime there. Uh, as you're please going, please do. Please do. Um, did you forget to put the slide for the D choker in there, or no? I did. Yeah. Okay. Did so let me share. That. 